Here is everything you need to know about patch 0.7.9 all the way up until hotfix 0.7.9D. I've played a new patch for a solid 50 hours and here's the deal. Hey everyone this is Dieworm and today I will break down last epoch patch 0.7.9, tell you everything that is new, everything that got hotfixed and ultimately give you my thoughts. Enjoying last epoch content? Consider subscribing. First off, I'm usually not the first creator out of the gates with patch news or breakdowns. I actually want to play this game for a couple of days before I make up my mind. This way it's fair to the game and I'm not wasting your time with superficial content. Let me start by making 11th hour games a massive compliment. This patch is absolutely huge. The amount of content in it totally insane for a two month patch and I've enjoyed almost every minute exploring the new monolith, some of the new skills, the new zones, listen to the quality new sounds, look at the new subtle loading screens that change based on the era you're in and I could go on for a while. And I will in this video. There are definitely issues and we will get into that but overall this patch is a major step forward for last epoch. Patch 0.7.9 and its hotfixes can be broken down into a few sections. I'll talk about the big new changes that got implemented. The monolith updates turned into its own little soap which I have covered in a dedicated video so I encourage you to check that one out. It's in the card. It is interesting and definitely not the end of the soap. In this video we will cover everything else however. Let's start with game balance. Poison got nerfed again. The scaling per stack went from 7 to 5 percent. This is the fourth nerf I think and it keeps counting but poison was very strong. I haven't tested this enough in this patch yet as I wasn't really playing a poison build but the short testing that I did gave me reason to believe 5 percent might actually be the sweet spot. It is still pretty much superior to bleed and ignite which both got buffed by the way but that scaling is linear. I tried a bleed build and so far I wasn't successful because because bleed stacks just aren't as effective as poison stacks. After swapping from bleed to poison the build instantly felt better. And I fear this may be true until either poison scaling is completely gone or until bleed and ignite get additional effects as well. Such as weakness to fizz and fire respectively. Slowly but surely though poison is actually getting balanced. Minion damage over time got nerfed in the FX department just like the regular damage over time which rolls on less items now. That's another nerf to poison and it is noticeable. Dodge got nerfed nerfed dodge chance overall is slightly lower, the dodge affixes give less dodge rating and the belt dodge affix, the one that gave you max 800 dodge rating on potion use, now only gives max 550 dodge rating. Health scaling is buffed, which isn't necessarily a buff. Each level you now gain 6 health instead of 5. More health lowers resistances however so it depends a bit on your build if this is good for you. The arena got buffed as well making it harder. It skills at about 9% faster. It reduces XP gain and enemies deal more damage and have more health than before. I think the rationale behind this is that the devs really want you to play the new monolith and not cheat a bunch of levels in the arena. Bosses now gain temporary protections similar to bosses in the first couple of seconds in Path of Exile. This mechanic adds a bunch of resistances to bosses to ensure you can't one shot them and this way you actually have to play through their mechanics. And this mechanic has been tweaked a fair amount in hotfixes to make it feel better from a player perspective. However, I would argue it's not really in a good spot still. What I really dislike about this system is the inconsistency. What seems to happen is that based on either incoming damage or some sort of timer, the resistances suddenly kick in. So one moment you are doing a lot of damage and the next moment you're hardly doing any damage. And this is a problem when during particularly the last phase or during phased fights you just want to destroy the boss before an ability hits and there's no way to predict your damage output anymore. Maybe the resistances kick in, you don't kill the boss and worst case scenario you may die because you anticipated that the boss wouldn't get that one shot off but he did because the resistances kicked in. I do understand the design philosophy behind this mechanic but the recurring protections are just weird and make fun fights inconsistent and in some cases really long and boring. I thought a regular red dragon, the fire dragon, basically the only dragon before this patch and he did no damage really but I also did no damage because of his resistances. It was a 5 minute fight or something for no real reason. This system also makes powerful characters seem weak on bosses which I would argue is exactly the opposite of what you'd like to achieve in an action RPG like last epoch. I understand the wish to let us experience boss mechanics and I'm sure the vast majority 
majority of new characters actually does experience those, but powerful builds should honestly just wreck bosses because that's one of the main incentives that you create powerful builds so you can clear content fast. Now you have this artificial system in place that slows you down without posing challenges and it doesn't feel great. It's pretty clear to me this system needs more tweaking and honestly it might be the best choice to simply remove it. I like the old system a lot better at least. On to exalted items. These are items that contain a tier 6 or tier 7 affix on them and they can only be found as loot drops. They have this purple color so you instantly recognize them and these new affixes are very powerful. Whenever the exalted items drop, which really isn't all that often as these are super rare, you get that sense of excitement. However, that sense doesn't last long because literally any item in the game can currently be exalted. Also a level 4 sword. And obviously the affixes on that are wasted as the base damage of a level 4 sword is way too low to be usable. As a matter of fact, probably around 85% of all base items are useless in endgame simply because their base values are too low. And dropping those in an exalted version is a bit of a bittersweet experience. The devs have already responded in one of my streams, twitch.tv slash dieworm by the way, that they have heard this feedback and will improve on the exalted items. I think we can expect some semi-smart loot here where it only drops on top item levels as those are generally the only items you want these affixes on anyway with a few exceptions. Tier 6 affixes don't drop below level 55 so making those drop on base items below level 55 doesn't make a whole lot of sense in most cases and tier 7 affixes only drop after you reach level 90. It is a great concept that requires some more tweaking in order to be viable. Then uniques. We get a lot of new uniques. Two uniques are random drops you can get from anywhere, the Murama's Hilt and Malvern's Rit. The first is designed for a cursed melee lich and the second provides a permanent minion which is super cool. This would work well with a necromancer. The other uniques, no less than 17, are distributed across the new endgame system, the monolith. Whenever you complete a timeline, the boss drops one out of two uniques. There are seven timelines which makes 14 uniques and then there are three uniques left, I'm assuming for the empowered timelines as there are three of those. Some of the uniques are really cool, such as the Woven Flesh, which you get early on. Next to a bunch of Leech, it offers 85% Lancing Blow, greatly helping out with sorting your defenses. The set affixes have been shuffled around a bit. You can no longer create a perfect set of jewelry, which massively boosts your defenses. You now will need to use a few more items for that. Eventually though, this does increase item diversity as there are more options to mix and match. I'm not going into this too much. If you own a bunch of these, you're grinding anyway and you know about the changes. If you don't, the changes don't really impact you as you're yet to find these items. Weapons got rebalanced, swords, axes, maces and scepters have more melee damage than before and spears and staves have less. Some other interesting bits in the item department. Arena keys sell for 6500 gold which makes them actually viable for people like me. The shrines of wealth drop twice the gold now and it starts to look like something. You get 1 or 2k in endgame, seems fine to me. And finally the class specific affixes now drop a lot more often. They were super hard to find and it should be a little bit easier now. In my experience though they are still rare because the last couple of days I hovered over every single piece of loot and didn't find many of them. As a matter of fact I hardly found any usable loot but that's a different topic for probably a different video. On to skills. We get three new skills. Assemble Abomination, Bone Curse and Dread Shade. I've mainly played around with Bone Curse a lot which is a very versatile skill and has some excellent design. Without any specialization it is a curse that makes enemies take more physical damage. You can however specialize it in many different ways. There are utility nodes like chilling enemies, you can increase the damage taken, you can have it cast mark for death, you can cast it on minions and buff them and you can even make enemies explode when they die or summon minions from their corpses. The possibilities are basically endless. Assemble Abomination is a channeling skill where you will consume other minions to create this massive abomination to fight for you. You can make it cast instantly as well, make it leech health which is very useful as its health slowly decays just like a wraith. You can also decide which minions it should consume and you can get it to learn all sorts of abilities from consumed minions. Overall a very cool original skill although I don't immediately see a practical use for it as it is very expensive you would be 
resummoning minions a lot and something like sacrifice may work a lot better. With the new monolith as it currently stands you really need decent tanky builds if you want to complete the monolith and I'm not sure this abomination fits into that category. Finally Dreadshade basically is skilled to buff your minions providing them with more damage. However downside is they lose 3% health per second killing them whenever this buff is active. You can however also apply this Dreadshade to enemies, you can apply it to a single minion, you can buff specific minions and I can definitely see a place for this in the Necromancer archetype. A lot of skills were also rebalanced and here are a few highlights. Death Seal was finally fixed. It was introduced last major patch but had a lot of issues. Primarily it was super overpowered and some people even managed to make it to Arena Wave 1000 with it. There were some hotfixes on Death Seal but the devs didn't really manage to shut down its power. They have now found the underlying issue which has to do with the skill duration and damage calculations regarding that. They fixed it and I'm glad to tell you the death seal is still pretty strong. I made it to the level 80 monolith all the way to Lagon where I wiped but that wasn't because of death seal. It is still strong, fun, fast, a very decent end game monolith skill as long as you put it on a tanky character and Lich isn't super tanky. I went with high health pool and tons of health leech but that wasn't enough to take a few hits so it's back to the drawing board there. Earthquake received a significant buff, lower base cost, 50% added damage effectiveness for a total of 350% and they threw a node in there which made the attack undodgeable. I like it because that really felt bad whenever it happened. This could be a fun one shot ability now. Judgment received a buff, primarily the Searing Faith node which is now granting 5 added fire damage instead of 10 base damage and with the 300% added damage effectiveness that is 15 fire damage. Not only that, it affects everything in Judgment all added sub skills so not only the consecrated ground the same goes for holy fire it should buff judgment skills significantly summon wraith got a bit of an overhaul with some new notes they allow you bleed damage on the wraiths you can have them apply damned or and this is a spicy one they grant you eight ward for each summoned wraith after the giant nerfs on ward making it practically useless in most builds there are small hints in these patch notes that it may be making a return such as the archmage ropes change which grant ward based on mana spent Specifically, Acolyte lacks defenses compared to the other classes and with Ward gone all that's left is Leech and an endgame monolith that's not enough I found. Maybe Ward is viable again with the right items. Tempest Strike received a small buff because procking the Storm Totem from the skill actually now makes use of the Storm Totem skill tree. Storm Totem is still pretty bad but still, small buff. Transplant got nerfed because it doesn't replenish 30% mana anymore which was a big reason why it was chosen in some builds. It now only gives you 30 flat mana which is still significant and I'm using it in the death seal transplant rib blood build but it is a nerf regardless. Onto the visuals where most notably the skeletons look really good. The warriors carry this shield, rogues and mages are distinctly different from each other and controlling a summoner army, something I enjoy doing actually, is now less of a homogenous bunch but the individual members have more identity which is great to see. Some of the player hubs got overhauled too, the council chambers got a bit of a makeover but primarily the end of time has received huge changes. This zone looks absolutely phenomenal with a giant black hole in the background, the event horizon and the distortion of the light. It is very fitting for the different eras, it may play a role in the story even I guess and it is a hub unlike anything I have ever seen I would say. They boldly went once again above and beyond and delivered something magnificent. On a much smaller scale the avid watcher or reader could have noticed changes as well. What about this bridge that used to look pretty bad but now in many eras looks fresh and clean or transplant which now generates a bloody mess including new sounds just gross and fun. Tons of sounds got updated and if you play last epoch with decent headphones which I do you will for sure notice all the work the sound department put in. Next to all of this 11th hour games already released three hotfixes within a week addressing the most immediate community concerns. Once once again showing their dedication to the game and proving that they take feedback and the community seriously. Performance is actually a little hard to tell for me. I swap monitors and play in either 32x9 or 21x9, both 1440p, depending a bit on what content I'm doing. Previous patches I played on 16x9, 1080p, so you know, it's a change. That requires me of course to lower the settings a bit, so yeah, hard to tell. 21x9 on high settings generally runs really well, but of course when there's a lot happening on the screen, which is a lot larger now as well, the game can't really keep up and starts lagging. That is both the game and my PC. Not sure what else to tell you about this. And that is all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed the video ladies and gents. Thanks for watching and making it to the end. See you soon. Bye bye.